Shalom Aleichem, everybody. In a previous video, we spoke about, a recent video actually, we spoke about how Yaakov brings down, Yaakov Avinu, how he is able to draw down the level of Hashem's mercy, the 13 level, 13 attributes of Hashem's mercy, which is above even the highest of the four general worlds. It's from Hashem Himself. We draw down a, a level of mercy from Hashem which is above limitation meaning all the, the general worlds in order for them to exist in a state of limitation. You know, as you, as, you, as you realize in this world, we don't, at first glance, we don't experience Hashem's infinite revelation. So, the, and the reason for that is because Hashem wants to give us free will, and He does that in a way where He seemingly hides, and me, hides His light and reveals only a measured, limited amount of light. But Yaakov Avinu is able to draw down mercy from Hashem, which is above any of these limitations. Hashem is beyond infinite. He's not even limited to being unlimited. What does that mean? That means Hashem is beyond infinite. That even though He's beyond infinite, He could relate to limited. Whereas, lim whereas infinite, the infinite light, it's infinite. It doesn't relate to limited. But Hashem is beyond even infinite. That He could also relate to the limited. That's really the beauty of Hashem. That's really one of the beautiful things, of course. Um, <clears throat> and that Yaakov Avinu, he is able to draw down mercy upon uh, Rachel, who represents the Malchus of Atzilus. And Rachel, since she's the mother of the Jewish people, she also represents the Jewish people that Yaakov is able to draw down mercy upon the Jewish people. And we see that also who else is very strongly related to these 13 attributes of mercy, bringing down mercy upon us from above, from Hashem Himself, and bringing us to a place where we can receive Hashem's mercy. That is Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses. That Moses is able to draw down, draw down mercy upon us. We see this example after the nation, God forbid, you know, Hashem save us. As we say in Hebrew, Rahman with son, they when in times of the golden calf, what happened? Hashem was was ready to to start a new nation from Moses, and and he was going to end. All the Jew, all, all at the time, he he made the suggestion about the Jewish people that he wanted to make a new nation through Moses. He wanted to, God forbid, uh, get rid of the Jewish people that we had so far when they were sinning. And what did Moshe do? Moshe said, "Hashem, please, please have mercy on the Jewish people. I, if you're gonna make a nation for me, I'm not even interested. I I'm only interested in the Jewish people." Moses said, "If you're gonna make a nation, from." from just me, then erase my name from your book. This Jewish people that are here now, the ones that did sin, they are my nation. They are my people. They're the ones that I want to, to be the leader of, not my own descendants. Because as you know, Moshe is one of the descendants of Yaakov Avinu, but the whole Jewish people are, some of them are not the descendants of Moses, but they're the cousins, so to speak, of Moses. So Hashem, when the Jewish people sinned, He wanted to make a new nation just from Moses' Moses's descendants, and Moshe said no, Moses said no. So we see the beautiful mercy that Moses has, the love he has for his people, how he's such a great shepherd, right? And we also see that, that what, what happened after that? Hashem wasn't forgiving the Jewish people, he wasn't interested, until Moshe said the 13 attributes of Hashem's mercy, the 13 midos arachamim, that we say three times a day, uh, twice a day when we daven, twice a day when we sit on days of tachnun, when we say in Shachris and in the Mincha prayer, in the morning offering prayers and the, and the afternoon prayers, then we say the 13 attributes of mercy. So what happened? Hashem wasn't just forgiving the Jewish people until until Moshe said these 13 attributes, and then it went click, boom. It was like the unlock to the safe to Hashem's mercy. And as soon as Moses said this to Hashem, Hashem forgave us immediately, and He had mercy upon us. And we see that this, this is all the, the mercy of Hashem. Because the one who gives Moshe the ability to defend us, the Jewish people, is Hashem himself. We see that Hashem gives Mo does it through Moshe. But of course Hashem wanted to have mercy upon us and wanted us to be the nation. But he did it through Moses. Why? Because Moses is so humble. He's so humble before Hashem himself that he's so... He's such a good vehicle, such a good vessel for Hashem's light. He's such a good person to carry out Hashem's plan. Why? Because... He's completely surrendered to Hashem. Moses is completely surrendered to Hashem. To the point where Hashem could then, through Moses, reveal things that are beyond physical, beyond the limitations. Because Moshe, he's so given over to Hashem that through Moshe himself, you see, you connect to Hashem. Because everything that Moshe represents is Hashem. He's not interested in himself. He's only interested in Hashem. So his whole self is about Hashem. Everything that Moshe represents is Hashem. 
So we see this strong connection between Moshe and Yaakov, Moses and Jacob, that they're able to bring down the mercy of from Hashem upon us. And Yaakov is Tiferes, the Midah of Tiferes, which is in between Chesed and Gevurah, the balance. It means harmony and, and beauty, if you want to translate to English. But of course, the Hebrew meaning Tiferes can't be exactly translated, but it means the balance of Chesed and Gevurah, the beauty. And, and Jacob is the balance. Yaakov is the balance. He was the most, he took things to the highest level of all, out of all three of the forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob took it to the next level. He was also called Israel, Israel. So we are called Israel after Jacob. Jacob, Bnei Israel, the children of Israel, the Israelites. So we see that Yaakov, we see that in every generation there's a Yaakov, a Moshe of the generation, a leader of the generation, through this person that he could bring mercy upon the Jewish people. And Moshe Rabbeinu taught us. Everything that Moshe represented was, was Hashem, to the point that Moshe connected us with Hashem. Because of all the teachings of Moses and all the explanations that Moses gave us, he connects us to Hashem. That it's the tzaddik, it's the leaders, that they're able to, Hashem made it so that in this world, we teach each other. We are responsible for one another, to teach each other. And of course, the leader of the generation, the tzaddik, the, the Moses of the generation, the Jacob of the generation, is the one who, who gives the teachings to the people, to his children, spiritual and, and physical children. So we see that when we connect, and we have all these teachings of the Moshe Rabbeinu, of, of our generation, where we have Hasidus, we have the, the Hasidus of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, we also have the, the Hasidus of the previous Rebbeim of Chabad, and all the Tzaddikim, and the Arizal, and of course the Zohar, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, we're about to celebrate Lagba Omer, and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai revealed Hasidus to the world. And we see that we have the teachings of, of all the Rebbeim, that in, around the time of the Baal Shem Tov, the Baal Shem Tov had a revelation of Mashiach. He met Mashiach. And he asked Mashiach, when are you coming? When are you coming? And he said, when your teach teaching spread. Mashiach said to the Baal Shem Tov, when your teaching spread, Mashiach will come. So what happened? We see that the Mashiach, the, 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 the Mashiach is very due to come as soon as possible, maybe right now, because all the teachings of the Baal Shem Tovs are, are spreading outwards. See a lot of groups. Chabad, all the Rebbeim of Chabad teaching Chassidus is, is, is the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov, is, is, you know, through through the, the Magad of Medrash and the Alter Rebbe. And Rabbi Nachman from Breslev, who's the, the great grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, teaching his Chassidus. That we see all these, and there's other Hasidists as well, but these, especially these two groups who are the descendants of the, you know, of the, of the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov, we see they're spreading worldwide right now, and we are experiencing a revelation of the teaching of, teachings of Moshe. So when we connect ourselves to the teachings of the Tzaddik, we draw down mercy upon ourselves. Of course, we have a direct connection to Hashem Himself, and Hashem in every generation through the Tzaddikim reveal more and more deeper teachings to prepare us for the coming of Mashiach. And we see that in the Zohar, it talks about how in the the times in the time around uh, when, when the Zohar describes it, it corresponds to a, f a few hundred years ago, about two, between two and three hundred years ago, that it says the heavens, the, the fountains from above and from ab below are going to open up. This is a prophecy of the coming of Shepherd. And what do our sages explain this means? The, 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 the fountains from below represent the technology. The technology is going to spread, the, the, all the developments, and that's the industrial industrial revolution took place in, in, in the year that corresponds to this pr prophecy in the Zohar. And, and then we see, and the heavens, the, the fountains from above are going to open up. And what do we see from the fountains of above? That is Kabbalah and Hasidus. Basically, Hasidus came in a few hundred years ago. And all the and, and the Arizal as well, and all the the Arizal's explanations, and then later Hasidus, to explain the Zohar, the deep teachings of the Zohar. We see that what is if if a person studies Chabad Hasidus today, they realize that it's it's a lot of quotes from the Zohar and from the Arizal's teachings, and you see that the, the teachings of the secrets of Torah, the pnimius of the Torah, the the inner secrets of the Torah, are are being spread nowadays, and this is connected to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, of course, and. Um, because Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's birthday is is is, uh, is in, on Lagba Omer is tomorrow night here in, in Jerusalem, uh, here in Israel. Tomorrow night we're celebrating Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's birthday. So we see that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai revealed the Zohar to the world, the secrets of the Torah. So on his the anniversary of his passing, which he said is a very happy day, which is tomorrow, tomorrow night is the day where he, on the day of his passing, he re revealed all the secrets into the world. So he said, don't be sad on my day of passing, celebrate on my day of passing. And we see that. Rabbi, all the teachings are, are sourced from Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, all the inner secrets of the Torah. So, so, it's, so it's the birthday of Pneumius of Torah, which means the inner, inner part of the Torah. So may we all celebrate it soon. May we all celebrate it really with the coming of Mashiach. 
that we learn that the Chassidus Kabbalah, the inner secrets of the Torah, is, is a taste of the coming of Mashiach. Just like before Shabbos, you have to taste from the food of Shabbos. It's a mitzvah to taste the food of the Sabbath before Shabbos. So too, before, right in the days, right into, up and up, coming up right before the redemption, the days that are directly preceding the redemption, may it be today, who knows? Today may it be, Bezat Hashem, hopefully. And we, what do we have to do? We have the mitzvah to taste from the food of Shabbos. So spiritually, we have to learn the secrets of Torah to get us prepared for the coming of Mashiach. May it be today. God bless you all.